who all assemble in this great place on today. I have a quick question I have to ask before we proceed. If you had to look back into your calendar of date books, how many of you had this day on your calendar a month ago? Neither did I. But can I tell you, Aunt May and God, they set us up for a time such as this. So the Bible teaches us no man knows the hour. The moment when we may be called to go home. But we come today with the heart of thanksgiving just about right around the corner to 93 years young. What a life. So family, we're going to tell you, if you have to mourn, you go ahead on and mourn. Because we understand the tears. It is a cleansing. Friends, we understand if you have to cry, go ahead and cry. Because it's a cleansing for us all. I was reminded in the beginning of COVID, 2020. I was going into the mall James York Plaza to a store we all know as the Dollar Tree. And Aunt May was coming out as I was going in. And I stopped and spoke to her. And she spoke back to me with a nice, quiet, still voice. So I asked her, I said, how are you doing? She said, I'm fine. Do I know you? And I said, maybe so, maybe not. I told her I was Mickey's only begotten son. Holly Park? I said, yes, ma'am. She smiled. And she said to me, I'm proud of you. I said, me? She said, yes, I heard. Y'all know when people hear stuff, you know, <laughs> we ain't so sure, Jim, what they heard. But she said, I heard. Keep up the good work. I said, yes, ma'am. And she smiled and proceeded out of the store. And I couldn't help but look back. And I went back to go and help her to her car. She was driving. I say to God be the glory for the great things he's doing in our lives Holly Park we're here again we are here again but God makes no mistakes can I get one witness God never makes a mistake amen somebody so we're going to ask Brother James Marsh. Y'all look at the program, you see some Johns and some James. All we need is at least one Peter. We have some disciples of him. I'm going to ask my brother if he would uh, give us an opening selection as we prepare our hearts for what God has in store for us on this great day. Amen.
Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. You know the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. You know the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, y'all can testify you'll never forget we used to sing a song old back in the church back in the day y'all remember back in the day it was on one Monday Jesus lifted me y'all remember when we went all the way down the list and we got to Sunday how can you forget when the Lord has touched you have he touched anybody lately I I mean he did wake you up this morning with a finger of love come on somebody How can we forget what the Lord has done for us? He saved us. He delivered us. And he set us free. Amen, somebody. So we ask our brother Johnny, woman, if he'll come forth at this time and give us some of God's word. Reading up the scriptures. Amen. Good afternoon. Afternoon, sir. Church family, believe me, I do feel his love. To Miss May, to Miss Wallace, Aunt May, I called all of those families. And I saw her just about every day. She called me, Johnny, I need this grass cut. Be right over. Johnny, I need a light bulb change. (laughs) Be right over. Johnny, can you start my car? Miss Wallace, where you going? (laughs) I just want to start it. That's all. I think Miss Wallace knew me before I knew me. Scripture, 23rd Psalm, Old Testament. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I prepare the anointing of my head with oil to prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. New Testament. 
St. John, 14th chapter. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know. And the way I go. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou go. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Most holy, wise, and eternal fathers, once again, God, we come before your throne of grace. God, we come today, God, realizing and recognizing that you are the author and the finish of our faith. And we realize, God, without you, we can do absolutely nothing. So we thank you, God, for another day's journey. A day, God, which we've never seen before. And once it's gone, God, it will be memories to us. But Father God, we'll remember how we gathered here at White and Funeral Home to celebrate the life of Miss Mary Wallace and Aunt May. We'll remember how we gathered here in this place, God. And the word told us we're two or three gathered in your name. Touch them, get them anything, you shall be in the midst. So Father, have thine way in this place, God. Show up and show out like only you can. Touch the family today, God. You know what they stand in need of today. Comfort, peace, and joy. Touch the loved ones and friends that came near and far to celebrate Mrs. Wallace's life today. Bless them like only you can. Continue to travel in mercy upon them that may arrive back to their separate destinations with peace and harmony. God, we ask you to bless every song that's going to be played and sung today, God. Bless those scriptures that was read and more to come. And bless this, your preacher, God. Hide him behind your cross of Calvary. And God, for your waiting congregation, we ask you to touch your people now. So they have an ear to receive what thus said the Lord on today. Comfort the hearts, God. Do it for us, God. It's all said and done, God. We want to hear your words. Well done, my good and faithful servants, in whom I am well pleased. So get the glory today, God, of everything said or done in this place. Get the glory, God, even the one who reads the acknowledgments. Get the glory today, God. We're going to give it all to you because it's deserved. And we pray now in that name that's above all names. What we heard where every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that you are Lord. So have your way, God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, the saints of God who love him say amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you all in Jesus' name. At this time, we're going to have my sister, Hope Bailey, to come and give us some acknowledgments. Then we have a musical selection by my man, Minister James Marsh. Then a eulogy by yours truly in that order. Good afternoon, everyone. Before I read the acknowledgments, I was not going to read them all, but the Holy Spirit has moved and led me and say, do read them all. It's not many. I'm talking about seven, but the reason I'm going to read them all, we have 92 years of lineage. We have 92 years of wisdom and knowledge that God imparted in her. We need to sit at our elders' feet. Those of you that are her grandchildren or great nieces or whatever you may be, 
sit at your elders' feet and learn of their life, learn of their journey, what they went through, what they came through, and what it cost. I was raised by my grandmother, so I have an old spirit. And I sat at her feet, and I learned of the lineage. So I'm going to go ahead and read all of these because she deserves that. So often we wait so late to give flowers. It's always at this time or a wedding. Let's change that mindset and give flowers while they're alive, especially our elderly. They're so forgotten and thrown away. Let us do better by our elders. Okay, that's enough of that. I'll move along in a bit. Church resolution of respect for Miss Mary Aunt May Morning Wise. We are here for a limited time, and with the breath of the infant begins the race to the grave, a race we all must run. Where is, in the providence of God, he has brought to a close life of Miss Mary Morning Wallace, the officers and the members of the Free Indeed Kingdom of Ministries in Williamsburg, Virginia, Feel, feel that it is benefiting to express their sympathy to the family during the passing of Miss Mary Wallace. We commend you of the capable hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our thoughts and prayers are with you today and in the days ahead. We pray that peace of God will bring you comfort. Where it is, we know that the love and the legacy of Aunt May will live on through you and will celebrate her life with you today. We believe the words of Jesus in John 12, 1, 3, that encourages us to, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, you also believe in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will receive you unto myself, that where I, there you may be also. But it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake. We are praying both with you and for you. It is our prayer that God will surround you with his loving arms and that his peace will be your strength as you find comfort in the many loving memories of your Aunt May and cherish the fact that God loaned her to you for many years and has now afforded her a home in the place in heaven prepared just for her. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution is given to the family and a copy is kept in the church archive. To the family, we know that your sorrow is great, but please remember that loss is heaven's gain. For to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. Loving and humbly submitted on the 28th day of August, 2024, the officers and members of Free Indeed Kingdom Ministries of Williamsburg, Virginia, Pastor Dr. Johnny A. Wallace, and Shante R. Wallace, and in Vigilance Bishop Crump, the church administrator. We thank God for the word of that. Didn't she have a beautiful middle name, Morning? How beautiful is that? The Highland Park Civic Association. One thing I ask from the Lord, this, one thing I ask from the Lord, this is only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his secret tent and set me high upon a rock. That's Psalms 27, 4 through 5. To the family of the late Miss May Morning Wallace, we, the Holland Park community, were deeply saddened to hear of your, the passing of Miss Wallace, affectionately known as Aunt May. She was beloved, she was a beloved neighbor and friend who meant a great deal to many in the Highland Park community. We extend our sincerest condolences and sympathies to the family and to all of those whose lives she's touched. Aunt May was a beacon of love and joy and inspiration. As the oldest member of the community, hallelujah, she served as a true elder, offering sage advice and acting as a living respiratory of community, knowledge and heritage glory. Her unwavering commitment to making our community a better place was a constant source of inspiration. We will cherish her memories. 
May you find comfort in the, in the arms of our Savior, Jesus Christ, during these challenging times. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That is Isaiah 41.10. Sincerely, Vicki Tyler, President, and the members of the Highland Park Civic Association. Amen. Thank you for doing this. In loving memory of Miss Mary Walker, I'm sorry, Wallace, like a summer bloom, hope returns unexpected. On behalf of us at Satira Hospice Services, please accept our sincere sympathy. While we have traveled this road with many families, we recognize and understand that grief is a very personal experience. But it's not a journey you have to go alone. We continue to be here for you and are proud to offer families access to one-on-one -on -one meetings, bereavement support groups, and annual camp for children and more. If we can be of any help, please call our bereavement coordinator, your friends at Centera Hospice Service. That hit a chord with me because I went through that with my mom. Wonderful program. Heaven is where Jesus is, where worship fills every breath, where light fills every place, where love fills every heart, where peace fills every soul, where joys never cease. Heaven is our forever home. Not an eye has seen, not an ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. We pray that God's continued strength and, and peace during your time of bereavement. Remember that earth has no sorrow, that heaven can't heal. God bless each and every one of you in brotherly love. Pastor Chance R. Bolton and the Union Baptist Church. And we will end with this letter from First Baptist. To the family of Sister Mary Wallace, it is with our most sincere sympathy that the officers, the officers and members of the First Baptist Williamsburg Church of Williamsburg, Virginia, wish to express our sincere condolences and the passing of Sister Mary Aunt May Wallace. As a church, we are to bear one another's burdens and sorrows. At this time of great sorrow, please know that your family is in our thoughts and prayers. As a church, we are to bear one another's burdens and sorrows. We pray that God will continue to grant you comfort and peace today and during the days ahead. May the outpouring of the love you have received serve as a reminder to you and your family how Sister Mary was loved by all who knew her. At church, we, I'm sorry, we know that you will miss her and you will share great sorrow today. The tears of the sorrow may fall, but God's fingers of love touched her and now she simply sleeps. Throughout the years, Sister May kept both her faith and her deep love for her church. The officers and members of First Baptist Church extend your fam to your family our heartfelt sympathy and pray that God will give you comfort and his abiding presence in this sad hour. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, no more crying, neither shall there be any more pain. That is Revelations 2, 20, 21.4. And this comes from Dr. Reginald F. Davis Pastor. And I just want to say one thing, one more thing. She's free. Thank the Lord, she's free. No longer bound. No more chains holding her. Her soul is lifted. Oh, it's just a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, she's free. Glory. Thank you, Lord. so cold there in the shadow I never felt your light on my face until I 
I confessed and repented. Realizing I'm living by your grace. You are the one with all the glory. And now I'm praying for love and strength. forever praise your name you saved my life and you never complain did you ever know that you're my hero everything and Minister James for that great selection. Time such as this is perfect. 37. My beloved, as I told you a few minutes ago, Mr. Mormon, we read that scripture that was laid on our heart. So we want to take you back down Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. We found over in the gospel where he told us, let not our heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also Jesus said unto him I am the way the truth and the life 
No man cometh through the Father but by me. As Mr. Mormon said, Thomas asked the question, how do we know you the way? Jesus had to re-identify himself to them and explain to them, I am the way. In other words, he was trying to explain to them, y'all don't remember the Lazarus experience? When his sister said, I know you're going to rise again during the resurrection. And he had to explain to them that I am the resurrection. And I found over in the Revelation, the 21st chapter, it said, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For well, the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end I will give unto him that is artist of fountain of the water and of life freely. I got to keep going, y'all. It's getting so good to me. Psalms 116.15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The message Bible said, God never sees his children die. He simply sees them coming home. It is said that when one of his children, we call them church members, was to transition, he realized and recognized God has called him home. So, Father, once again, we come before your people, asking you to hide us behind the cross of Calvary, that we shall not be seen nor heard. But speak through us, God, because the family, the friends, those came near and far stand in need of a word of encouragement today. Speak, Lord, for your servant here. And I pray now, the words of my mouth, the very meditations of my heart, will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, because truly, God, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and we give you thanks. Say to God who love him, say amen. Amen, amen, amen. There was a guy by the name of John Watson, the Scottish preacher, who would kneel down and whisper in the person's ear, in my father's house are many rooms. And then with a contented sigh, the person will slip away. Entirely unfair, I know. There is something about this great portion of scripture which consoles us even right to this day. If we could see only for a moment just how glorious Aunt May's homecoming was. No one here would call her back to the limits of her age body. If you could see where she entered into, you dare not to want her to stay here with us. Because as we read in the scripture, Minister James, there in glory, no more sickness. There in glory, no more pain. There in glory, no more heartaches. No more death. No more troubles. I know we say it here, Troubles don't last always. And I start by to tell you, they don't last always, but they keep coming back. And when they do show up, we got to recognize who is the author and the finisher of our faith. 
The scripture told us that he is the alpha and the omega. That means he's before everything was and he's after everything will be. That means he knew the day that we will be standing in the midst of his people. He knew the day that Mother May would be laying in her body, of course, before his people. He knows all things because he's an all-knowing God. So nothing catches God by surprise. So you dare not to bring her back to this old place. Mother May will be missed very dearly. There is something very appropriate about her departure. Even as the author of Ecclesiastes indicated, there is a time to be born. Somebody going to help me? And there is a time to die. See, Ecclesiastes 3 and 2 is so appropriate because she had lived out a full, complete 92 years life. And if you were to talk to her today, Mother Adrian, she would tell you something like this. I fought a good fight. I ran my race. I finished my course. How many 92 year olds we have with us today? She said, if you know like I know, truly earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. She had accepted and known the love of God and known the love of her family. She had her house in order. Come on, somebody. She was all ready to depart this old place. She was a Christian woman, and she loved God and God's music. Come on, somebody. One person said that there is nothing more certain than death and nothing more unsure than life. Life in these bodies and life on this earth is temporal. Somebody say we're on a pilgrim journey. We're only passing through. This place is not our home. Come on, somebody. As a matter of fact, the Bible says over in Jeremiah, I foreknew you before you was in your mother's womb. I predestined you for a time such as this. Now, if God knew us before we was in our mother's womb, he spoke us into existence even before he said, let there be light. So if we knew, if he knew us before this foundation of the world, then we must have been over in glory once before in his thoughts. So he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Where I go, you may be also, because in my father's house, this is what Jesus was trying to explain to his disciples. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. You think that nice house you got in Holly Park is good? You think that apartment you're living in is cool? You think that trailer that you had to pull down the road is nice? But I stopped by to tell you, in his father's house, God has a mansion laid up for each and every one of us. And one glad morning, I heard old mother in the Baptist church say, when this life is over, I'm going to fly away. And when we get to the glory, when we get to the other side, we get to see mama on them. We get to see papa on them. We get to see all our sisters and brothers, husbands, wives, even my baby boy who left here at 15 years old. It's going to be a glorious time to see them again. But when I see Jesus, anybody going to testify ain't nothing like seeing the handprints, the holes in his side, ain't nothing like seeing him standing on his sacred dope. Come on, somebody. And we get to bow down at his feet. We get to say, holy, holy, holy. What a time, what a time it would be. Somebody shout with me. When I see Jesus. See, the Bible refers to our bodies as a tent. And for a little while, a tent can be a wonderful home. When a hiker is in the mountains enjoying the wonderful outdoors, a tent can be exactly what he needs when he becomes weary and needs a place to rest and refresh himself. While the tent, come on, Mother Hope, are wonderful for their intended purpose, a person doesn't expect to live in a tent forever. Watch this, watch this. Before long, a person longs to go home. Have you ever been into a desert place or a deserted place or to a foreign land, but you couldn't wait to get back home? I don't know where you grew up at. I don't know where you come from, but there's no place like home. When you go back down the hill of Hollane Park and you come up another hill, come on somebody, or maybe you turn down that first street, but I had to go all the way down the next hill and enjoy home. There's no place. Come on, Juicy, talk back to me. There's no place like home. So he couldn't wait to return back home and live in a house, a structure 
that is such more permanent and sturdy than a tent. You remember the scripture we read earlier? Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. In my father's house are many mansions. Somebody said, oh, a dwelling place. I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, he loved us so much that he said, I'm going back to daddy. And when I get there, I don't want to be there all alone because one day I'm coming back to get you and I want to take you back with me. He said, where I am, you may be, oh, thank you all for helping me preach this sermon. You may be also in that prepared place that I have for you. Watch this. Watch this. Tents are good for its purpose and helpful for a season. But the tents can wear out. The fabric of the tent become weak. And it can tear real easily. The poles, they easily collapse. But watch what Apostle Paul said. He's speaking in confidence and possessed by a believer said in first, no, I'm sorry, Second Corinthians 5, 1, 6 and 8. He says, now we know that this earthly tent that we live in is destroyed. We have a building from God in an eternal house in heaven. Come on, somebody, help me now. A house not made by man's hands. Come on, deacon. So, 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 therefore, we are always confident and knows that as long as we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Watch this. Stay with me now. We live by faith and not by sight. Can I get two witnesses? We live by faith and not by sight. Watch this. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home. But this is what I found out, preacher. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to lay themselves to rest. But the Bible says to be absent from the body. This old tent, this old vessel is to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen, if you can. Probably no one has given us a clear picture of what death means to mature Christians than a grand old man named John Quincy Adams who once said when that remarkable American was turning four scores years old, he was hobbling down the street one day in his favorite city of Boston, kind of like you, you and I was this morning. We was getting here. Amen, somebody. And, 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 and he, the story goes on to say he was leaning heavily on his cane. And suddenly a friend slapped him on the shoulder and said, well, how's John Quincy Adams this morning? The old man turned slowly and smiled and said, kind of remind me of Aunt May, and smiled and said, Fine, sir, just fine. But this old tent I'm in, this is what John Quincy said, that I'm living in is not so good. Somebody said there's a leak in this old building. And my soul has got to move. He said the underpinning is about to fall away. The thatch is all gone off the roof. And the windows are dimming more and more per John Quincy. He said, I can hardly see out the windows anymore. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't surprise me if before winter's over, he would move out of that tent. How many of y'all realize Aunt May moved out of her tent? As a matter of fact, she moved out of Harlane Park. And now she has her mansion that was not made by man's hands. She's in a place now called glory where no more sorrows, no more issues. I wish I had some help right there. No more trumps and no, y'all ain't talking to me. No more hospitals, no more troubles that's going to show up in her life. She said, I moved from my old place and I moved to a new place. But for as John Quincy Adams, he never was better, he said, never was better whatsoever. With this, he started hobbling on down the street, believing without a shadow of a doubt that the real John Quincy Adams was not in the body that you could see 
with your physical eyes. The real John Quincy was living in the tent of the body, which you can't see with your natural eyes. But God be all the glory for the good things that he has done in Quincy's life. He said the Bible goes on and share with us that the spirit came into the man. Y'all remember Adam, don't you? When, when he created him in his image and in his likeness and he laid him down and put him, y'all ain't talking to me, and began to make him out of the dust of the earth. The Bible says he goes in and breathe breath of life into his nostril and he became a living soul. Well, that's what we are today. We are a living soul. But can I tell you, he's coming back one day. And he's coming back to take that breath out of us. Have you ever seen anyone transition before? And all of a sudden, oh God, they gave up the last breath. Just like Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. He said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. Well, I stopped by to tell you, God is coming back to get his breath. And he's going to take that breath back home with him. Y'all ain't talking to me. And that breath going to be all clothed in spirit form. No more tents. No more bodies. No more eggs. No more arms. No more issues. No more nose. No more lips. No more teeth. No more heart. Come on, somebody. You're going to be in a spirit form. And John said, what you see in my casket someday will not be me. It's going to be the temple tent that I lived in for a little while. A temple physical man on the outside. But there is a spiritual and eternal man on the inside. The flesh dies. Y'all ain't catch that, did you? I say the flesh, it dies and buried. But the spirit Somebody going to help me up in here. I say, but the spirit, it lives on for eternity, forever with God. When someone we love passes on, there is a natural and element of sorrow. Jennifer, I feel your pain, my sister. Brenda, I feel your pain. There's a sorrow that comes upon us when you've been around someone for so many years and for however long you've been alive, that person can become an important part of your life. And you miss them when they are gone. But today, somebody say, but today. But today, I say, but today. Beyond our natural sorrow, there is a supernatural joy. For the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night. But the joy, somebody gonna help me close this message, but the joy comes in the morning. Huh? See, the supernatural joy that we know, it, it comes by the reality of knowing Jesus. It comes by the reality of God's love. It comes by the reality of forgiveness. It comes by the reality of a new birth. It comes by the reality of heaven. The reality of eternity. The reality of a future reunion. Aunt May will tell you, let the life I live speak for me. This woman was a child of God. She has gone to her fathers and earthly light has gone out but where on Mary is this morning this afternoon and later this evening she's in her wealthy place. She's in her glorious place. She's in her holy place. She's in a righteous place. She's in a place that no weapon formed against her could ever prosper. So her, her, her earthly light it went out. But her heavenly light, it shines bright. The glory of God is her shining light. I wish I had some help right there. Shine brighter than the sun. And her radiance in her face is now glistering in that glorious light of Jesus. So we come to the end of our journey with Mother May. But it's yet and still, it's a good day. Somebody say it's a good day. It's a good day, and an earthly journey has ended, and a heavenly resident has just been established. Here it is, Brenda. We ended here, but we begin again there. Ah, uh, say over yonder. <laughs> over yonder. There's going to be a fullness of joy. Watch this, watch this. It will be established what is our hope. It will be established what is our confidence. It will be established what is our expectation. 
Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, 56, he spoke these great words. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption or incorrupt. In corruption, behold, I showed you a mystery. Anybody had to solve any mysteries lately? I showed you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, come on somebody, the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for the corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal, this mortal put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall, oh God have mercy, we be brought to pass the saying that is written, death, where, oh God, has been swallowed up by victory. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, my beloved, and the strength of sin is the law. But God be the glory. Thanks be unto him and him alone, which giveth us victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to say it one more again. When this life is over, y'all ain't talking back to me yet. When this life is over, we get to fly away and get on over to the other side where there will be no more weeping. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more issues. There will be no more troubles. Somebody say, I'm so glad that one morning I get to fly away. Come on, Mother May. Uh, May she say, I'm gone now. Y'all don't have to cry for me no more. She say, I'm gone now. I'm in a much better place. I'm gone now. You don't need to bow down at me. Bow down at Jesus. She said, I would have it that you all give your life to Christ. Because he is the way. According to the text. The truth and the life. And no man comes through the Father. But by Jesus. But by Jesus. So I couldn't think of a better day. I couldn't think of a better day to. Give it all up. Let it all go. Whatever it is that's hindering your walk with Jesus. Then on this homeborn celebration of Aunt May, I couldn't think of a better day to say, what must I do to be saved? Beautiful sunshine outside. But the sun got to shine on our inside. While we're yet walking on this earthly ground. Our eternal light got to shine someday. And there's only two places when it's all said and done. And that one place they tell me they're going to be gnashing of the teeth. Skin going to be burning off and they're going to be coming back on day in and day out, burning off and coming back on day. And they're going to be crying and asking for some drinks. They're going to be crying and asking for some help. They're going to be crying and asking for some mercy. Can I tell you it's going to be too late? But the other place, anybody expecting the other place? I'm talking about the other place, the place we call glory, where that mansion is waiting on you, our Father's house in heaven. I don't know about you, but I want to hear the word someday. Well done. My good and faithful servant, in whom I am well pleased. Come on, come on, come on in. Let me, let me make you rule over many things because you've been faithful over the little things. Y'all ain't talking to me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Where I go, you may be also. So we extend this invitation to you. If you know not Jesus and pardon your sin, come and give your life to Christ while you yet have time. We say, we say it every Sunday. Tomorrow's not promising to none of us. There's no guarantee we're going to even make it home today. But can I tell you, my beloved, except Jesus cracked the sky, we're all going to lay across somebody's altar. And the Bible declares that the judgment is going to show up. And we're going to have to give an account for every works that we've done and didn't do. Even every word that proceeded out of our mouth. 
Today is your day of salvation. Will you accept him today? We say God bless you in Jesus' name. Family, we love you. We're here for you. If you need us, just call on us, and we'll be there. At this time, we're going to turn everything over to the great Whiteman's funeral home. They may take over from here. Keep in mind, Mother May is resting. The very last scripture we read said that the dead in Christ shall rise first. And if Jesus cracked that sky while we still here, he said the rest of us can be caught up and meet them in the clouds. Amen if you can. God bless you in Jesus' name.